Hello everyone, welcome to another Sketchy Tech. This week, we'll be taking a look at the PC Windows software CoinOps Next. Now, if you're expecting one of those videos where I load up CoinOps and flip through all the pages and let you see all the games uh, and show off a collection, you're not going to get that this time around. What you're going to get is something that you can use. And in this case, I'm going to give you a guided tour of how CoinOps works. Now, this isn't going to be a, uh, a tutorial on making your own packs for CoinOps or anything like that. But I'm going to show you how CoinOps works in a layman's way and show you the files that you can use to change CoinOps to adapt your own packs and games and make it easier for you uh, just as I struggled through myself. Uh, this is just uh, knowledge that I've gleaned from working with CoinOps for the last, geez, seems like forever, 10 years. Uh, I originally had CoinOps on the Xbox. The author of CoinOps is a, an, an eccentric genius named Brittany Pears. I don't know his real name. I believe he's Australian or New Zealand, somewhere down in that area. And Brittany is a, uh, he's, he's very clever, but he's not exactly... Uh, what I would call great at ex explaining how this thing works and he's got a, uh, a a great discord channel if you're interested in learning about coin ops or learning about the distribution of coin ops I'm not affiliated with those guys I'm just a uh, independent uh, uh, fellow that's just trying to help out and show people what some of these files do because it can be confusing if you are not aware of the way things work and Really, once you understand how most of the things work, it's actually quite simple uh, to manipulate or at least ascertain what's happening if something goes wrong. I've seen a lot of people download packs, and if the packs aren't 100% foolproof, uh, then they give you trouble and you don't know what to do. And, and getting information on how to fix this stuff can be difficult. And so it's easier if you could just go in yourself and try to figure it out. And a lot of it comes down to understanding the emulators that are involved and understanding the basic setup of coin ops and that's what we're going to be looking at today just a basic setup of coin ops and how it works i'm going to pull open the uh the files on here let you see what's in them and how they uh tell the computer what to do when it comes to uh, loading various emulators in coin ops so enough gibber gabber let's give it a shot Okay, so what we're going to do is look in the CoinOps Next directory, and I'm just going to sort of explain what some of these directories are and what they, the files in them mean and how they work. Uh, so I've got my CoinOps Next directory on my D drive. We're going to look in here. Now, these folders are pretty much standard. Just a quick uh, overview. The advanced config folders, these are just batch files that have been created to, to uh, change various attributes of the program and in terms of the, how the attract mode works uh, the default controls your ability to uh, change settings because it defaults with you unable to change any of the control settings or whatnot uh, so there is something to be had by looking through this stuff most of this is pretty self-explanatory double click on it um, then you've got these are fixes when this program doesn't work uh, I'm assuming you've gotten past that point by now uh, this is just media that's included that you can use to, uh, you know, it kind of a, shows you how to make your own, like, pack media and whatnot. Uh, we don't fool with that. We'll get to collections in a minute, uh, and we'll get to emulators in a minute. I want to go and start with launchers.windows. This is the directory that we should start off with. Now, when you go into launchers.windows, this is every launcher uh, for every emulator that you've got installed. Okay, it's pretty simple. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, so we're gonna pick a uh, we're gonna pick just one of these launchers just to look in it and see what is in there. All right. So let's look at um, Vectrix. Okay. So you can see these are Vectrix.conf files. I've got these automatically set to open with just Notepad. So you can open these with Notepad or WordPad. And then what you've got written in here is how is where the emulator that runs that particular uh, system is. So right here you can see Vectrix runs out of the RetroArch emulator and then 
these are arguments which is probably dash L with load and then this is this is telling uh, retroarch what library to use and then right here it's telling it the the file name to use now you don't have to understand or even remember this stuff uh, this is just how these work uh, I'm gonna pick another one here uh, just to look at uh, let's look at um, let's look at the um, let's look at MAME alright so you can see here this is straight up it tells it um, what to run and then this right here is just the item name most of them are real simple like that however <clears throat> if you do any um, installation of your own and someone has like for example let's say you download a pack and it you start to run it and it just you know it starts to run and then it comes right back to the front end well the first place you want to start looking for a mistake is in the uh, is in the launchers okay the launchers if they're not set up correctly or if the emulator it's looking for is not there or it's in a different place uh, then you're gonna have to edit that launcher just and it's not that hard to edit them you just edit them with notepad but you're going to tell the launcher uh, where uh, where that particular file is. For example, you can see uh, this is a master system uh, dot uh, conf. You can see it's set up to run with MAME 64. Well, let's say I didn't. Uh, this isn't in emulators MAME uh, uh, 64. It's somewhere else. You would just have to ch simply change that line to uh, to point it in the right direction. So this can be important. It's also important. Uh, to show you where uh, uh, emulator, which emulator is being used. Like for example, what emulator are they, are they using to run 32x? Okay, they're using MAME. So what does that tell you? It tells you a few things. Number one, it tells you which emulator to look at if there's a problem. Because if there's a problem, you could go and independently run MAME and check it for yourself. Make sure that the uh, ROMs are running correctly. And if they're not, the problem may be somewhere in MAME. Uh, and, and if they are running correctly, then you could say, okay, MAME is fine. There's something in the way this is loading up that's incorrect. And it gives you a, a, a foothold as to where to start. Uh, something else you might need to do is if a game's run, not loading in, uh, correctly under the front end, you may need to go and just go to the emulator folder yourself, run the emulator, and make changes in the emulator that you want. Maybe you don't want... Um, uh, four by three screen you want full screen well uh, sometimes you can do that while it's running sometimes you need to go there when it's not running and uh, when it's not running a game and change it manually and that's a way you can know where to go so if I need to know what's running my Amstrad I know right here again it's main main he's got a lot of the stuff running through main because main runs so much stuff it's, it's easier uh, but something like say the Jaguar here uh, this is a game run through RetroArch, so you're going to have to go through RetroArch. And RetroArch is sort of a front end unto itself, but it's pretty simple to go in there and change options and stuff if you have to. And I will say, not to scare anyone, because generally the basic setup for this, when you download CoinOps Next, uh, you get a f fully functional and ready to go uh, front end with the games installed. It's all ready to rock and roll. Uh, if you add stuff, that's when it can get a little hairier. When these say unofficial packs, they're not kidding. These packs are uh, made by people just like me or anybody else, and they uh, uh, sometimes make mistakes, sometimes forget to put art in the right spot uh, or whatnot, and so it can cause trouble. Something else I want to mention early on, uh, I'm using uh, this Xbox uh, 360 wired stick. All right. Uh, these games and stuff are, are all set up to run. I mean, the, the, this is the sort of the default controller, is the Xbox 360 stick. Now, I don't know how uh, Xbox went up the line with the Xbox One. I don't know if it's configured the same way. But I know this joystick does everything it's supposed to do, and the buttons are generally configured in the correct way, which we'll cross that bridge when we come to it when they're not. So that's basically what those do. And you can, by the way, I should mention, you see here there's a 64 to 32 bit. Occasionally, you'll come across things that are uh, that have two different versions, and the these right here will, if you select 64 as your default, that's where they'll run. Now, I want to go to the emulator directory itself. Okay, now uh, the way these directories are set up is the emulators generally don't house the games. However, there are some emulators that actually have the games in the directory for various reasons, uh, and so. 
but usually the games themselves, the ROMs, are in the collections folder, which we'll look at in a minute. Uh, the, these uh, emulators are simply exactly what, they, what you think they are. This is where the uh, emulators are that run the ROMs. So, for example, if we go into the, this MAME uh, folder, there's MAME. Uh, and there's uh, MAME and all the, the accoutre mod that, that come with MAME. Uh, and a lot of this stuff's been pre-set up, so you really don't have to do anything. Yeah, you really probably won't ever have to come in here. Uh, and you can see here, MAME is one of those uh, particular t things that actually has ROMs in it. And you can see a bunch of different ROM sets there. You also will notice that occasionally things will, will run their own MAME. You can see there's MAME, Zinc, another MAME here. So some things will install multiples uh, of, of a certain emulator. That's okay. Just let it do it. Uh, because uh, um, you're going to have to uh, just let the thing ride. I've generally, when I've downloaded, um, when I've downloaded packs, I'd say 80% of the time they work flawlessly. That's not. That's 70% of the time. Then about 50% of the time it's a minor thing, and then another 50% of the time it's something you have to really dig into. So, you know, hey, if for a pre-made pack, you're doing okay. Uh, so we were talking about the possibility of having to go in and actually go in and edit it, uh, uh, change settings in a emulator. Uh, that may happen, and if that does, uh, you'll ha this is where you'll go. You'll go into the emulators directory. You'll pick the emulator that you're having trouble with. Uh, maybe it's Dolphin, you know, and he can see here's Dolphin. You can run Dolphin. You don't have to run it through Coin Ops. It'll run. You know, pretty much all of these will run without Coin Ops being involved. Coin Ops being just the front end. You can go in there and tweak it. Uh, change controller settings and whatnot uh, to your heart's content. This is where you would do it. Uh, again, the settings for most of this stuff, for the most part, are pre-made. So you don't really have to fool with it, but sometimes when you need to, you're going to need to know where to go. And it's that emulator directory. Now, let's go here to, Roy, really your sort of main event directory here, which is your collections. Now, this collections is where all your software is stored, all your ROMs, all your uh, art, all your videos, it's all stored here. And it's stored in a certain way. So we're going to have a quick look. We're going to go down to Vectrix again. Vectrix is uh, a great system. I've got one of these things and they're, I love it. So um, when you go into one of these directories and collections, you're going to see the, these directories here. You've got medium artwork, playlists, ROMs, and system artwork. Okay, we're going to start at the bottom first. System artwork is simply the art that sits behind uh, the, the menu of the machine you click on. So if you clicked on Vectrex in the, in the CoinOps Next uh, folder, or when, when you run at the front end, this, is the video, this right here would be what sits in front of the wheel. Now there are actually uh, several other things you can go in here. I'm going to switch to something I know has all of them. So let's go up here to uh, the PC Engine. Um, you can see also here we've got a logo and we've got floating, okay? What you can also have is video. And video will be the video that sort of plays when you land on that spot on the wheel. So if you're going through all your different systems and you come to uh, PC Engine, there'll be a video playing there, like a default video, all right? So that's all that is. So if you want to monkey around with the art, and you can see, I'm going to pick it's another generic one in television. Uh, you can see all these are the, they're all labeled the same. Okay, so if you want to do this, you've got to, you label your picture, whatever you want, they're the same, and that's what will come up. All right, simple stuff there. Now let's look at ROMs. ROMs are exactly what you think they are. They are game ROMs. Uh, some and, and they all depend on the emulator as to what format they want. Some want uh, some will allow them to be zipped, and some won't, and some want them in a certain CHD format, and some want them in a CDI format. It could be any, who knows. Uh, again, if you these things are pre-done, whoever you download the pack from should already have taken care of all that stuff. So you really don't have to worry about it. But if you want to add your own ROMs, uh, which you can, uh, all you have to do is dump the ROM. In, and of course, this is assuming the emulator will support that ROM. Uh, you're going to dump that ROM in that directory, and then... Once the and, and you have to do it in the, in the right format. And then once you've put the ROM in the directory, then the next task is to make the artwork and the video show up when you spin the wheel to select your games. And that's where you go into medium artwork. Uh, what you've got here, this is very simple. 
uh, logo is the logo that appears on the wheel. And you can see right here all the different logos uh, that appear on this uh, Intellivision wheel. So if I want to play Snafu, you know, there's Snafu. All right, it's just that's a, it's a transparent label, uh, a logo. And they're all in PNG format. They're easy to make. They're easy to download. The, uh, the good thing about uh, 2020, where everyone's using these front ends now, uh, you can find loads and loads and loads of artwork. Uh, MU Movies, and in, if, if you just Google stuff, you can find it. So if you go, and let's say you want to add a homebrew and television title uh, that's not, uh, there's no logo for, you can just make your own. It's no problem, as long as it's in the PNG format. You've also got video here, and this is simply the video snapshot for that game. Now, this is important. It goes across every emulator and every game. You have to name your ROMs the exact same name as your video file and your and your logo. They all have to be named the same thing. That's how the program knows what to load. Simple. Just name them all the same thing. The ROM, the video file, and the logo. That's all there is to it. Some games have a cover that's a that change it's sort of a picture that changes in the background uh you it's again the same name if you want to put the cover now and you know what i'm talking about if you spin the wheel you'll come up with some things and some you'll on some uh packs they'll all have covers but on this one there's only the one now so that's pretty simple stuff all you have to do is remember the rom if you're going to add roms put your rom in in the right format uh and of course assuming it works without emulator and then put the video in the video for, uh, folder. Put the video snapshot with the correct name, same as the ROM. In the logo folder, put the the PNG file, same name, same as the ROM. You're golden. That's all there is to it. It's a very simple process for that. Now, um, you're probably wondering uh, how does the main menu on this thing work? Because that what I just showed you works for pretty much every emulator across the board. You, again, just it, uh, same every time. So adding ROM is no problem. So, but some people might ask, well, how does the main menu work? How do, can you change stuff around? How do you get rid of stuff? How do you add stuff? Well, this is something, and this is a carryover from the old Xbox uh, coin ops days. If you get down here to a, there's a folder here called main. And again, we're still in collections, main. This is an important folder because it's got a lot of settings in here that you're going to want to, that you're going to want to have a look at. Now, the first thing we're going to look at is menu. Okay, menu has every game that's in your menu with the exact name of that of that game. Every uh, excuse me, every system. So right here you can see uh, we've got uh, uh, Vectrix listed down here. Here it is, Vectrix. Now if I double click on this text file, you get nothing. These are literally zero files. You can see the size zero, and these are just files that tell coin ops to add that option to the menu that's all there is to it that's what they do so if you want uh let's say you're going to uh let's say you download a uh, a pack that doesn't show up for some reason uh, on the menu at all well the first thing you're going to want to check is to make sure that there's an entry for it here in in the menu uh section of the main folder uh, that's where you have to go it's pretty simple go there and see what's there now let's say you know I don't like I don't like the 3ds for example I want it gone simple you just drag it into remove collections you can see here I've got some collections I've removed for various reasons or because I couldn't get them working yet or stuff I've tried to adapt uh, and so you just stick them in here simple stuff and that means, and all you're doing is just basically it's a placeholder. They're pull, you're pulling them out of the menu. That's all this uh, area has. It's very simple. Uh, like I said, these are zero, zero um, size files. Now, the next question: Can you um, alphabetize or uh, change where this stuff is? Yes, with a but. Uh, it gets into a complicated area. Of course, you. When you change this menu, that means you've got to change the collection name, and then any paths that you've got going, and and, and any the names of all the uh, uh, of all the things we looked at earlier uh, in the uh, in the launcher section. You can see all the launcher stuff again, same names, all right? That's the one thing you got to remember about CoinOps Next. Whenever you name your collection, 
the name of the collection, the name of the uh, launcher, the name of everything has got to be the same, just like the ROMs. So if you, if I was the name, if I wanted to change the name of uh, uh, Mega Drive to Sega Mega Drive, all right? Well, you'd have to change this. You'd have to change the collection. It's something that's it can be tricky. Uh, I mean, you can do it, but I mean, be prepared to fiddle with it. I've thought about putting my stuff in a certain order. And my laziness outweighs my uh, ability to care, basically, and so I don't do it. So let's go back to collections. There's one more thing I want to talk about here, and again, it's in main. And this is your this is this artwork area here. Now, this is you see all these different points here in artwork. We looked under the artwork area in the individual collections. What this is is actually the artwork uh, for your actual. Uh, you know, for the actual wheel. So these are the logos, for example, that are that make up each individual um, spoke in the wheel. There's an arcade. You know, we've talked about Vectrix. Here's the here's the logo that comes up when you spin the wheel to Vectrix. This is where those are stored. Again, named the same as the collection. Named the same as the as the uh, uh, everything is the same name. It's something you need to remember at all times. Uh, these are again these are PNG files. If you want to change one of these logos, you can. As long as you name what you change it with something the same as what it was, you're golden. Uh, that's but this is where those are stored. Uh, there you can see there's a lot of stuff here, but that most of it's empty. Most of the stuff's not used. Uh, you know this stuff is strictly uh, for a few pieces of of, of uh, art. Now, so we looked at logo. We're also going to look at uh, video again by now this should be pretty obvious this is the video snapshots that play whenever you move your uh, move your cursor over toward toward that thing uh, so oh, these are the system files here they are you know again we'll get down to Vectrix here and Vectrix is this is that's what you see pardon the noise that's what you see when you move your when you move the wheel spoke over Vectrix, that's what plays. All right, it's that simple. That's what those are. And then there's also one other thing here. Let me find it. Um, where it actually puts it up. Here it is. When you spin the wheel, before the video comes up, there's a pause, and it will show a screen. These are the screens it shows before the video starts. Now... These aren't required. None of this stuff's required. You could have no video and no pictures, no nothing. Uh, but these, it's just sort of an extra flair. Uh, I don't have all, all of mine don't have these, but uh, they, uh, uh, you know, some, most do. And these come, mo most of these guys make these by, when they when they do a pack. That's, that's all those are. So that's pretty much the long and short of what you need to know in, in the main area there. But that's pretty important. Like I said, if for any reason, because of the playlist, and here's a, Here's the only a text file here, and it's really not something you're going to fool with. Um, let me see if there's anything else that comes to mind. Um, really, core is just a list. It's where uh, it lit, holds all the uh, uh, all Labrado files for various em emulation libraries. It's not really anything you're going to need to fool with. Joy to Key is simply the what they use for games that don't have joystick support. Uh, they've got the uh, They've got that little program that runs. You may have seen it when you unload the program. There's like six or seven of them down here. You, they all go away. Uh, layouts again. This is that. This is something I don't really get into that much. If you're, it's uh, the layouts of the of how everything is laid on the screen, which I don't fool with that much. Uh, so the, most of the time, you'll get done what you need to in collections, core, and emulators. Now, let's talk about some of the uh, problems I ran into. Um, when setting this up, and this is just uh, um, this is just for uh, uh, certain emulators. I'm going to go ahead and run this, start this up, at least because it'll jog my memory on uh, these things. Let me uh, turn that down a smidge. So, Amiga comes to mind instantly. Uh, you know, I am a, I am Amigo Aaron, the sketchy tech, and so I gotta have Amigo on everything I've ever done, including this. Uh, and I've had no end of trouble with the Amiga, and the, I mean, I know what the problem is. The uh, 
the Amiga emulation on this, this is, it's very cleverly done. <clears throat> but I had a problem with Amiga defaulting to my second screen. Uh, and my second screen, it would go to the native resolution, which is real high, and the Amiga would run like crap. And it would not come to my primary screen. And it, the reason is, is uh, if you use Windows with multiple screens, you know that it almost always puts uh, the HDMI screen as the uh, video one, and then you, uh, it will put whatever else is video two. In this case, it's a VGA port. Well, my VGA screen is my primary screen, but this, even though it's all video two, and so I noticed that MAME did the same thing. Now in MAME, you can go in and change uh, the I and I file to to have it default to your whatever screen you want. But in uh, and you can do that in uh, Win UAE as well. But the problem is. Each one of these games in WinUAE is has its own configuration file. And so as far as I could tell, the only way I could get around this is to go in and edit hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, Win, of uh, WinUAE uh, configuration files. And so that's a real bummer. The workaround is, uh, you know, changing, just basically unplugging that screen or, you know, turning it off. It, then I'm okay, but it's still it's a big hassle. So if you have if multiple screens, that can be a problem uh, that you may have to uh, deal with. But I mean, like I said, in Maine, it's not that big a deal. But in and if people have problems with that, I can show you what I did to make that work. Uh, but uh, um, <clears throat> that was a hassle I ran into. Um, let me see if there's anything else that cut, jumps out. Um, the uh, so again, some of these it all comes down to who packed them up. Some of the stuff I added myself, uh, and I just converted it over from uh, his the old version of this, which is Forgotten Worlds, uh, and it converted pretty easy if you know what you're doing. Uh, but uh, uh, so, you know, sometimes there was some stuff I just couldn't get to work. Uh, but for the most part, it came over pretty well. You see a lot of headers here. Most of these I don't have anything in, to be honest with you. I try to maintain a, 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 a library of what I've got. And you know, and then a few extra things. And I'm, I don't try to be greedy on this stuff, so I don't have a zillion ROMs here. But I, I want for the interest of being able to show people how this thing works. Oh, let's talk about Pinball Arcade and Pinball FX3. I'm a big pinball guy. In fact, I own both these programs. Um, <clears throat> one thing I've noticed is that Pinball FX3 and Pinball uh, 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 Arcade do the same thing as when you click a table, and you can click a table. Uh, but it, it just loads up the program. It doesn't actually load the table specifically. Now, uh, I've, the, the fellow that put this up, and uh, I sort of adapted this from the vertical version, uh, which was, there's, uh, there's another build of CoinOps Next called Coin Arcade vs. Pinball, uh, where it's a vertical build, which is very clever if you've got a setup like that. I sort of converted this over to work with this. Uh, but uh, uh, the truth of the matter is this does the exact same thing. Now, they're both playable, but you're, uh, you're not going to be able to pick the direct table. This one was set up with configuration files to, for each table, but I've never gotten it to work. So, And I mean, maybe some people have. It, I mean, like I said, I'm by no means an expert. I'm just giving you the knowledge I've called together with fooling with this stuff. Uh, a lot of these, you're going to have people that occasionally mislabel the artwork. Uh, you'll have to go back and, misla and relabel some stuff. If you come up with a spot on your wheel that is uh, just text, you'll know that the logo is either not there or it's misnamed. And so you can go in and, and a lot of times the logos will be there. I've noticed that all the media directories for the various systems, they often include hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos and logos that for games that, you, that don't even come with it. That Which is actually good because that way you can add your own stuff. And you really don't have to go hunting. <clears throat> Most of the time, the stuff's already there. And so you don't have to do anything except uh, name it the same way that it's named in the, uh, in the, in the, medium, in the media directory, uh, the artwork directory. So it, that's pretty simple. Uh, so they've saved you a lot of hassle right there. But if you have something that comes up, you may have a game that comes up with no video and no logo piece. It just has the text. You click on it, it runs perfectly. No problems, right? <clears throat> well, that's great. All you have to do is just add that. Is just go in there and look and see if the stuff, the media is in there. And if it is, bam, you just relabel. It's that simple. Um, the, I have found this to be a very good package. Uh, again, Brittany, 
Britney's a, a he's quite a genius at this sort of thing. I mean, he always said he could convert this stuff to PC from Nexus, and boy, he didn't. He didn't mess around. I mean, and he's always improved it. I mean, literally, he's the reason why the Xbox, the original old OG Xbox, is still uh, highly sought out because it's a stable, uh, access uh, accessible piece of kit that does uh, exactly what you think it should. It's I've I've got an Xbox over here with coin ops on it, and I've had it for you know forever, and it works great. But the PC version, this really opens up a lot of worlds that you weren't that weren't available on the Xbox. If just because if you think about it, the Xbox, I believe has the equivalency of a Pentium. It's either I think it's a Pentium two in it, you know. So I mean, it's got, it's not like it's speedy. I mean, this is a fully fledged PC. I don't have uh, the hot rod as PC, but I mean, you you know, if you fool around with emulators, that a, a decent PC uh, can play, can do a lot of stuff these days. So <clears throat> I think. Um, this is definitely something worth getting. I've had very few problems with it, but at least uh, know, now that you know where things are, hopefully I'll answer some of the questions you have. And if you have a lot of questions uh, you know, that I can help you answer, leave them in the comment section below and I'll do what I can. Uh, like I said, I've fooled around with this stuff for so long, I've gotten pretty knowledgeable about where stuff is. I can certainly, I've, I've got enough dollars to be dangerous. That's what I'm sure. Hey, I'm the sketchy tech. That's what I do. So, hey, thanks for joining me. Uh, look for another uh, adventure in sketchy techdom. And until then, adios.